What is going on? I want to welcome you from AFCOR for today, Tuesday, August 30th. I'm your host, Sean Murphy, alongside my duo, my guy, Jeff. I Freddy Jeff rocking the 04 Pistons hat. So hot, man. Oh Got my to. gosh. Got to just watch the Ooh, uh, Rashid what? interview on all the smoke too. So I'm in the mood, you know. I got I got the 2004 and the championship hat on. I'm feeling it. I really yeah. am. Yeah, absolutely, man. And speaking of uh, speaking of uh, a season that brought hardware to the Pistons, there's a different type of hardware we're talking about today. That's the Rookie of the Year trophy, a trophy that eluded the Pistons and in, in Kay Cunningham this last year, but seems like possibly could end up in Jaden Ivey's hands this upcoming season. Obviously, there was the unfortunate injury to Chet Holmgren. I'm dead inside. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, but with that injury, uh, Jaden Ivey in the Vegas book booking odds is now second on the Rookie of the Year ladder uh, next to Paulo Bonchero and also guys like Keegan Murray and Jabari Smith Jr. So with that, Jeff, I don't know if a check going down makes me feel any different about where Ivy would end up in the rookie of the year race. Obviously, I mean, you know, with that kind of guy going down, it just makes his odds of, of getting it that much better. I see that. But what would it actually take for Jaden Ivy to have a rookie of the year season? Now, obviously, we did uh, make some predictions about what we think he could do this upcoming season. And if you're not, by the way, if you're not following uh, from half court on Twitter or on Instagram, you're making a mistake because there's a lot of great content going on there as well by uh, our social media manager, Naranjan, who's absolutely killing it. Killing it. Let, yeah. Let me just go ahead and show you. We had predicted the season averages for Jaden Ivy. I predicted he was going to end up at 17, five and six. Jeff, you mm-hmm. predicted 16, 5, and 5, and Troy was on crack and, <laughs> and said 9, 2, and 5. We we won't even get into Troy's because that's well, – well, Yeah, that, that's for the podcast. Sorry. What you, the you gotta, is he'll that? It yeah, that's, yeah, that's for – yeah, you'll, you'll hear about that in the pod. But, but Jeff, <laughs> those numbers all around, I, in my opinion, if he has that type of season, he's going to be in the race for rookie mm-hmm. of the year, right? But right. what are going to be those things that are going to put him over the hump? What are those things that are going to make Jaden Ivey stick out as a rookie of the year candidate? Well, he's got a flashy game. I think that's going to help him as well. But the second thing is it's it should be number one, really, is team success. They got to yep. win games. And I think that's what's going to separate. And, and we've had this conversation, too. We like Keegan Murray in this conversation simply because of the team he's going to. They're going to be in a position to win, win some games this year. And now if they win 40, I think that's still enough for him if he's averaging 15, 14 points. He might even win rookie of the year. Well, and even and then, then we have, saw we saw in the summer league how easy he could get 20 points in a summer league game. Right. Like if he if that translates to the league, if he can just walk out there and get an easy 15 points a night and help them help them mm-hmm. get to a playoffs run, playoff run, that definitely is something I would get Keegan Murray the rookie of the year award. And, and then you have Paulo, who's to me the best uh, will be the best rookie just because of he's the guy that's going to Orlando and they're like, listen, give the ball to him. It's your team. Right. Uh, he's going to have a higher usage rate, obviously, than Jay Ivey. But I, I will say this. What Jaden has, and I mentioned it, the flashy game. I, I mean, You saw our predictions. I think he'll go 16-5-5 five, and five this year. That's good enough to be in the race. Mm-hmm. But it really depends on what the Pistons do. If, if they win, like we expect, 33 to 35 games, certainly you have to at least consider Jaden Ivey. I, and yeah. I think that would be enough to at least give him the award. And if they gave it to him, I don't think people would be upset about it considering what Scotty won it last year and they won 40 games. Right. So, I mean, you're right in that ballpark. So for me, it has to be team success. But I think one thing that's going to help him is his game. Like Cade has, like for, for basketball lovers, for guys who watch the game and we watch Cade Cunningham, we we are impressed. We're, we are we look at his game and we're like, man, this guy's a pro already as a rookie. He just gets it. Yep. His game, his pace, he plays at. With Jay Nivey, he's going to be the guy that gets on Sports Center because of his, you know, he can posterize. He's out there. He's extremely athletic, um, up and down the court. That's going to help him as well. Uh, he's going to get more of, I think, a national attention, considering also Chet's not in the race. So it's really, a, I would say, a three-man race. To me, I think it's it's Paulo, Jay Nivey, and uh, Keegan Murray. So it just depends, Sean. How many games do the Pistons win this year? That's the yeah. big question I got to ask. Yeah, without a doubt. And when I'm looking at, like, other Rookie of the Year winners, and, and specifically when I'm looking at – uh, you know, what rookie would I compare uh, Jaden Ivey to? I'm going to go John Morant just a few years ago. There I feel go. like it's a pretty safe yeah. bet. You know, a guy who in, in, in his rookie year, he averaged 
17.8 points, seven assists, seven assists and four rebounds. So right about that ballpark of what we would predict and expect of Jaden Ivey this upcoming season. And I think, you know, I obviously we talk about all the things that, that we want to see from him on the offensive end, but I'm just curious to see about what, what his game is going to be on that defensive side of the ball. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he was challenged by Troy Weaver, challenged by Dwayne Casey. It'd be great as a defender. And so I'm wondering, you know, how that side of the ball is going to attribute to him winning that award. Because I think if he can come in and change the narrative and be serviceable on that end, like if he can get like like a steal or two a game and 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 affect people's field goal percentage close to the rim or on the perimeter. I think those are things that could also put him in that conversation as well, because I think we saw him Mobley this last year, everything he did on the defensive end, it wasn't all just stats. It was just how good of a defender he was. And in my opinion, I think Jay Nivey, I mean, obviously he still has room to grow in that area of his game. I know people were pointing out things from a, from a freaking Rico Hines clip, which will, Oh, we'll get into that tomorrow, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) but but I, I but I know that there's still room to grow for him on that end. But in my opinion, he has all the intangibles to be a damn good defender. And if he can come out and be good year one, I think that could attribute to him winning rookie year. I'm well. so glad you brought that up because that's something we've been echoing on this on this channel as well. Is I talk about the, the just the physical attributes he has, six ten wingspan. Like there's certainly there something there defensively that people don't talk about enough that I think he can get even better at. But also on top of that. And you mentioned John Morant. What separates those two is that playmaking ability. And I think if Jaden can get there, I'm not saying he's going to be John Morant averaging seven assists, but like we put, I had five assists, you had six assists. If you can get to that point as well, and you could, you're a two way player. That's your argument right there. If if you if you're winning games and you're a two way player who can also you know make plays for other teammates, Scotty Barnes, versatile defender, can play make. Cade, well, listen, that's another conversation. Could do both those things, but Mm it's another conversation. Uh, And then you talked about Evan Mobley. The, the ability to play both sides of the court. So um, that's really what it comes down to for Jaden Ivey. I think he can do it. Yeah, for sure. And and I think one thing that can really help him in that campaign as well. We talk about how Cade last year and even how a guy like Paulo is going to have to come in and shoulder a lot of the team's you know offensive load this year, right? I mean, Cade, that's just who he was. His usage rate. I mean, we went through the analytics. It's insane how much the ball was in his hands year one. And Jaden Ivey's not going to have that type of usage. Now, he's going to have a high usage, right? He's going to have the ball in his hands. He's going to be a key focal point of the offense. But in my opinion, I think one thing that could also help him in that campaign is if, is if he can, if he can stay relatively efficient as well from the field, if he can, you know, choose good shots from beyond the arc, if he can pick his spots and, and cut to the rim and use his athleticism and be a good off ball player as well, that's going to be something that's going to escalate his game. I think looking at, how he plays off of Cade Cunningham, if he maximizes that, I think he will only skyrocket up the rookie of the year odds. And I think that's just one of those things where he just has that esteemed opportunity that really no one else in this class has, which is to go play with that type of player day one. No one else, no one else in this class has that. I mean, Keegan Murray has what? DeMontis Sabonis? Jaron Fox. I mean, Jaron Fox is like a good playmaker. He ain't Kate Cunningham. No, he's not. He's not. A, I, I, we would both agree. He's not a, you know, pass first guard. If you're, if you're saying that. So like yeah. Pass I agree. Fourth guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think one thing that is going against Jay Navi, I guess in a way, and I'm, I'm curious to see how it starts at the beginning of the season is he has to learn to play with Cade. That's going to be the thing he has to overcome. Like Paulo, step right in, be effective. Keegan Murray, slide in with the with the Sacramento Kings, he can be effective. You you know your role right away. Yeah, I think Jaden's going to have to figure out his role. I mean, we talk about Sadiq maybe even being the two this year, and then eventually Jaden being the, that number two option. But he could take it this year from him. So that's what you have to look for. Probably the first, I would say, twenty five games. I'm going to be looking at Jaden Ivy and how him and K play well. If they play well immediately and they gel, man, he's got a case for himself. Right. Now, I mean, obviously for us, I think, I think one of the things that you and I even, you know, kind of took for granted was the fact that I think we both assume that Jay Nive is going to start day one. All right. things go well, right? I know a lot of the reports right now are that they're impressed with how he's been this summer. I know James said there's a good chance that he could start opening night. It's like, all right. So for him, I know like right now, like rookie of the year, something that's going to be a goal of his, it's something that he's going to like have to tackle, but like 
he's gonna have to focus on getting that starting job first and that that's kind of like the reality of the league so i you know obviously it's going to be one of those things that we're going to be tracking as the year goes on as far as like you know his rookie of the year campaign but it's important to remember it's not necessarily about how you start it's it's you know it's also about how you finish it's about how you play as the season goes on a lot of these times these young guys come in and they struggle at the beginning like Jalen Green did, like right. Kay Cunningham did, like a lot of these guys do. But ultimately, as they go on and as you see how they develop and, and grow and evolve throughout the season, you see those things that are going to make them special. And, and, and I think once we see Jaden Ivey around like January or February, I think it's going to be a whole different player than October yeah. or November. Yeah, one thing also, I'm glad you brought that up too, because with Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes, like both those guys were consistent. That's the word. So mm -hmm. it, it, I can see Keegan Murray being that type of player where he's getting you double digits every night. Um, and then there's Jaden Ivey, which he may, you know, float up and down. He may play really well, may play really bad. And I think right. Paulo's getting another guy that's going to be, you know, wishy-washy, but more consistent, I think, just because of the usage rate he'll have in Orlando. But that's another point to bring up because if you have Keegan Murray being old Mr. Consistent all through the season and they win 40 games, like especially how we judge the Rookie of the Year award now – it, it right. would make sense if Keegan won it. I mean, that, right. that's what we're in right now. It's not always right. the best rookie. It's, you know, consistency and you're winning games. Right. Now, one thing we both can agree on is that at the end of the day, we don't really give a damn if he wins the award or not. Ding, ding, ding. It doesn't yep. really matter. I mean, it'd be <laughs> one of those things where, like, it'd be awesome. It'd be cool to, to have that celebration and see a player in the Pistons organization win that award. But at the same time, all you really want to see from Jaden Ivey this season is this. Is he a guy or not? Yeah, that's and, it. And, and generally speaking, in year one, you can tell for the most part if he's a guy or not. And I'm just going to go out on a limb from what I've seen from Summer League, from what I've seen, even though obviously it is Rico Hines stuff. I'm not saying I'm taking anything away from it, but like, Whenever I watch Jaden Ivey with a basketball in his hands, whenever I see his athleticism, he's a guy. He just is a guy. He'll figure it out. So mm -hmm. overall, I think this year it's going to be about how he puts himself in that race. Let's be honest. He's definitely going to be in the Rising Stars game nonetheless. So um, I'm just excited for all the highlights that are going to come out of this year. And I'm curious to see what you think about what Jaden Ivey needs to do in order to win that Rookie of the Year award. Let us know in the comment section down below. But also, like I said, be sure you're going to our social media page at FHCorpod on Twitter. You can find our beautiful faces on there. Ooh, Look at gotta that. Gotta do it. Absolutely. So be sure you're following that. And also be sure you're subscribing to From Half Court so you're getting all that content for the basketball season. With that, folks. We want to thank you so much for tuning in. For my guy, Jeff I. Frady, I'm Sean Murphy. We thank you so much, and we'll catch you guys next time from Half Court. Be sure you subscribe.